Hello, welcome to Analog Output. We're looking at a full wave dual rectifier module in Cosmo format built from a circuit designed from Barton Musical Circuits. And what does this do? Well, it does pretty much what it says on the label. It's got two full wave rectifiers inside it, each with a voltage controllable offset or bias as it says on the front. And so what does that do to a signal? You put in some sort of a waveform, such as a triangle wave here. And what happens with a full wave rectifier is it leaves the positive voltage side alone and negative voltages get flipped around to positive voltages. So in this case, the upward going peaks are left alone. The downward going peaks are flipped upward. And then what happens after that is the result is AC coupled, so it's shifted, so it's back to going around zero volts again, and it goes through a gain stage that restores the loss of amplitude that you had when you did the rectification. So the result is a triangle wave like this, which is double the frequency of the original input triangle wave. Well, that's kind of cool. It actually only works like this with triangle waves, but it's something kind of nice. But there's other stuff you can do. I mentioned there's this offset or bias. You can take your input wave and shift it upward or downward. And then when you rectify it, look what happens. Instead of getting a plain triangle wave at this point, what we've got is a wave where you have big triangles and little triangles and the frequency in this case is the same as the original but it's a different waveform with a different sound to it, different harmonic content and again it's AC coupled and gain applied so you get an output that looks kind of like this. Now there's two of these rectifiers in the circuit so you could be rectifying two different waveforms at the same time if you wanted to but you could also use the normal connection which takes the output of the first rectifier and puts it into the input of the second rectifier. So you can take that output from the first rectifier and then apply a new offset to it and then rectify that and what you get is this relatively complicated thing. And all these offsets can be set with control voltages. So the ratios of the big triangles and middle triangles and small triangles, those all depend on where you've got the offsets set to. And if you're using a control voltage or two control voltages to set these offsets, then you've got all sorts of voltage controlled waveform morphing going on. So I decided to build one of these and I bought the circuit board from Barton Musical Circuits, I did, surprise, surprise, make some changes. One thing is that the circuit board is designed with Eurorack in mind. So there's four potentiometers and they're all board mounted potentiometers, but they're placed too close together for what would be appropriate for a Cosmo format module. So instead of board mounting all four, I board mounted two of them and then the other two I made panel mounted and ran wires from them to the footprints on the circuit board in order to spread these uh, knobs out a little bit more. Now as is typical with a Barton circuit, he likes to use 10 ohm resistors in series on the power rails. My preference is to use Schottky diodes for power reversal protection, so I made that substitution. Barton also likes to use 10 nanofarad or 0.01 microfarad capacitors for the bypass capacitors for the chips. Not sure why, just about everybody else in the world uses 100 nanofarad capacitors for bypass, and so that's what I used as well. Now another thing I wanted to do had to do with the resistors. 
in this circuit. There's several op amp stages and in all of them the input and feedback resistors have values like 100k and 200k and for the input stages that's what you want to use because you do want an input impedance for the module of about 100k ohms. But for the subsequent stages you don't need that high an input impedance and if you have a lower input impedance that will lower the noise floor and so I made the decision to replace those 100k and 200k resistors with 10k and 20k. It's just the ratio of the resistors that determines the output voltage you get so as long as it's the, the ratio is the same that's not a problem. However, there is one thing which you notice on the left, there's this 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad capacitor, which forms an RC network with that 10K resistor. This is what gives you the AC coupling on the output. And in order for that RC time constant to remain the same, the resistor has to go up to a value of one microfarad. So I made that change as well. And then that caused a little bit of trouble because you can see here the two capacitors on the left. One of them, the big white one, is this one microfarad capacitor. The gray one is a 100 nanofarad capacitor. That's used in a similar RC network on the input. But as I said, I didn't change the resistors on the input stage, so I didn't change that capacitor. I changed the other one but you can see how much bigger it is and the footprints were not big enough for these one microfarad capacitors for one of the rectifiers that wasn't a problem there was plenty of space to put it in for the other one these capacitors are wedged in between the two dip sockets and at first i thought well i just have barely enough room to get them in between the dip sockets and then i remembered oh yeah when you plug the ICs into the dip sockets they overhang a little bit and so you in fact can't get the ICs in with the capacitors filling the space between the sockets like this. So I ended up removing that big white capacitor and replacing it with a new one that's not next to the gray capacitor but on top of the gray capacitor and that allowed me to get the ICs into place, or at least one of them. The other IC, there was another problem. If you take a look at the lower left, one of these holes is plugged up with something. Uh, I'm not sure what. It might be solder. If it is, I couldn't get it to melt. Uh, it might be a chip of metal from the factory. I don't know, but the hole is plugged up. The IC wouldn't go in. I gave some thought to the possibility of trying to remove the socket, but I decided that would probably just end up with a too great a likelihood of damaging at least one of the solder pads on the board. So I ended up deciding I would just bend the leg of the IC out to the side and solder a little wire from that leg to the appropriate point on the circuit board. Now you can see I did that actually with two legs. The leg next to it had no trouble getting into the socket, but then it wasn't making good contact in the socket. If I pushed on that pin, it would make contact. If I released the pressure on the pin, it would break contact. So I said, okay, solder another wire. So I did that. Kind of a kludge, but it works. And Am I from now on going to inspect my sockets before I go ahead and solder them on the board and make sure they're okay? Of course I'm not. What are you stupid? I'm not going to remember to do that. Anyway, got it working. Let's take a look. Okay, here's our rectifier. We've got a triangle wave going in got zero offset and we're getting this frequency double triangle wave on the output as discussed before. And let's turn up the sound. Okay, now if I change the bias, it changes that waveform. 
and you can hear when it goes through zero the octave changes okay if I switch over to a sine wave still got frequency doubling going on but it's not a sine wave it's well it's a rectified sine wave And if we change it to a ramp wave, well now we don't even have frequency doubling going on. We've got the ramp wave just being converted into a triangle wave with the same octave. Form can't really use this with is a square or pulse wave because if you rectify a square wave you just get a square wave with a smaller amplitude so that's not so useful let's go back to the triangle and I can turn up the control voltage and automate that waveform morphing Now on our second rectifier we've got nothing plugged in so its input is the first rectifier so we get double rectification. Let me turn on that scope trace. Hmm. Hello scope trace, where are we? Yeah. Looks like we have a cable problem there anyway. So now we got some cool stuff going on on the second output. Let's take a listen to that. There you are, Barton Full Wave Dual Rectifier Module. If you'd like to build one for yourself, you can get the circuit board from Barton Musical Circuits, link in the description below. The front panel I designed in Cosmo format, and the notes on the changes that I made are in my GitHub repository, link in the description below. Have fun with those, and stay tuned. Got some more videos coming up for you. See you soon on Analog Output.